we are interested in the health of the community. Our team is developing better ways to measure the impact of mental disorders on our society. In particular, we are using methods developed by the Global Burden of Disease project. Usually, the total disease burden is measured with a metric called Disability Adjusted Life Years, or DALIs. DALIs allow us to combine the impact of fatal disorders that directly contribute to premature mortality and non-fatal disorders that contribute to living with a health impairment which results in a disability. More technically, DALIs sum up years of life lost and years lived with disability. For years of life lost, which are related to mortality, we calculate the gap between the age at death and the ideal life expectancy. Let's imagine a person dies of alcohol use disorder at age 65. If the ideal life expectancy is 85, then 20 years of life lost are allocated to alcohol use disorder. Disorders that lead to non-fatal disabilities are also included in the total count of DALIs. To calculate this type of health burden, we need to know two things. How disabling was the condition? And how long did it last for? First, let's look at the concept of disability weights, which are fractions that range from 0 to 1. Some disorders do not interfere greatly with daily life. These have a mild disability. An example of this is lower respiratory infection, which has a low disability weight of 0.05. Other disorders can have a profound impact on daily life. These have a severe disability. An example of this is quadriplegia, which has a large disability weight of 0.68. Next, let's look at the disorder duration. Some disorders only last a few weeks. Others can be more persistent and last for years. We can combine disability weights and duration to calculate years lived with disability. For example, here we see someone with a type of depression. It has a disability weight of 0.4. This person developed depression at age 25 and recovered at age 29. The duration of this episode of depression was four years. We multiply the disability weight by the duration. This person has 1.6 years lived with disability related to depression. Years lived with disability allow us to measure the impact of different types of non-fatal disorders on the same ruler. Now we have both fatal and non-fatal disorders measured in units of years. Let's go back to the example of alcohol use disorder. Imagine that the person who died of alcohol use disorder at age 65 was diagnosed at age 30. This person has lived for 35 years with this disorder. If alcohol use disorder has a disability weight of 0.18, then the total years lived with disability related to this disorder is 6.3 years. This person had 6.3 years lived with disability and 20 years of life lost related to alcohol use disorder. This adds up to 26.3 disability-adjusted life years that are linked with alcohol use disorder. Based on Danish health registers, we have been able to calculate years lived with disability associated with mental disorders over time. When we add up all years lived with disability related to mental disorders for the entire population, we found that schizophrenia accounted for most years lived with disability. 
we have also been able to show how mental disorders contribute to years lived with disability across the lifespan. Years lived with disability due to mental disorders start in early childhood and peak around age 30 and then decrease. In children, autism contributed prominently to years lived with disability. Anxiety disorders are shown in light purple. These impact in young adulthood and persist into older ages. Schizophrenia is shown in dark purple. This disorder accounted for about a third of all years lived with disability across the lifespan. Often, people have more than one type of mental disorder. This is called comorbidity. We have developed a new way to show how comorbidity influences years lived with disability. We call this the health loss proportion, or HELP. While the years lived with disability measures health loss at the population level, the HELP is a measure of health loss at the individual level. The higher the HELP, the greater the average health loss for individuals with a particular mental disorder. Firstly, we see that for those with schizophrenia, the total health loss due to mental disorders is approximately 75%, while for those with cannabis use disorder, the total health loss is 40%. So, on average, we can see that some types of mental disorders have more overall health loss than others. Secondly, for some types of disorders, for example schizophrenia, most of the health loss is due to the disorder in itself, shown here in the black bands. For other types of disorders, for example cannabis use disorder, most of the health loss comes from other comorbid disorders, shown here in the green bands. With the new HELP measure, we show never-before-seen details of how mental disorders contribute to health loss at the individual level. People with mental disorders live with substantial health loss because mental disorders often first appear in children and young adults, often persist for many years, often are comorbid with other types of mental disorders, and often are associated with substantial disability. Mental disorders are common. About one in three of us will have a mental disorder during our life. Even though health loss impacts on day-to-day -day life, people with mental disorders are able to maintain productive and valued lives, despite the fact that their health needs sometimes go unmet. We hope that our findings bring attention to the experiences of people living with mental disorders and highlight the need for improved services and treatments. To learn more, follow our project.